Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 43 of my fitness database series. Again, this is not necessarily about fitness. If you don't care about fitness, that's fine. We're building a database. We got lots of cool stuff. Uh, today, we're going to loop through the items in a meal if the user picks a meal from our combo box. Right? If they, if they just pick a food item, it just adds it to the log. If they pick a meal, they've got, you've got to loop through all of the food items in that meal and add each of those to the log. And this is analogous, analogous to like um, if you're building an order entry system or you're doing invoicing and you, you have like bundles of stuff. Like I used to sell computers, right? You can bundle a bunch of items together into a computer system. And then if you add that, it adds all of the items. So this has ramifications for all kinds of different databases. It's going to be a lot of fun. Are you ready? Here we go. All right, we are back. So far, we have put together our union query. We've got both food and meals in this box. We are working on adding the things to the up top here. <laughs> That's the technical term, the things to the up top -edness. We have our add to log, which is right here. We've added food items just fine. Now it's time to add meal items. So we're going to make another, instead of just message boxing it, now we're going to add meal uh, to log. To log. It'll fix it in a minute. And then we'll send in the uh, native ID. And now we got to write that. So private sub add meal to log. The declaration's where you make sure you got your, ca your, your camel casing properly. Right? And we're sending in a meal ID as a log. Long. Log long. <laughs> uh, I think I can help with the Pam Pan problem. <laughs> movie quote. Who knows it? Love my moving quotes. All right. So we're dealing with a meal. Now, I really like the way that I've been manually adding stuff in here. Um, like here, this day. This, this day here is just garbage stuff. But this is how I like doing it. I like having the name of the meal on the first item. And then I don't do it on the other ones. And it kind of helps to break it up where the next one starts. So I'm going to do the same thing in the code. I'm going to put the meals name here if I'm adding a meal. And then the items over here one at a time. And I liked, I, I, I initially thought of just adding the meal itself in here with the total calories and total protein. But I kind of like having all the individual components of the meal in the log because sometimes like... You know, the, okay, I might have had 1.5 cups of soy milk or, or a, you know, a cup and a half of, of this or, or three of these instead. So sometimes I like to make, you know, I like to call audibles on the meal when I add it to the log, but I want to keep the meal the same. I don't want to change the meal, but make little changes. I had a few more croutons today with the salad, right? Okay, so that's what we're going to do. The first, uh, the first line item is going to have the meal's name, and then each of the line items will have the food name in it. So we got to get that meal name from the ID. Right, get the meal name and add along with the first item only. Okay, so dim meal name as a string and meal name is going to be, we're going to D look up the description, description from the meal table. We can get it directly where the meal ID equals the meal ID. Now, just in case the user didn't type in a proper meal name, which they shouldn't, but just in case, this is one of those things where the user could break it, so we'll NZ it, comma, and we'll just put the word meal in there then. If somehow they got a meal in there without a name, which shouldn't be allowed, I don't think, just in case it happens, we'll just tack the word meal. You want, you want something in there, right? All right. Now we're going to loop through, through the uh, food items in that meal. So we need a record set. So dim RS as a record set. Set RS equals. Now, where do I get it from? It's the meal detail table, right? If you remember how we built this, right? The meal has the meal information. That's the name we're looking up. And then when you can, you can see it here. Here's the detail items, right? It's just a food ID and a quantity from the meal detail table. And guess what? Here's meal one, right? So we've got the food items right here. Now we now we have the food item and the quantity. We can just add it to the table. All right, you see what I'm talking about? All right, so set so RS equals, we're going to open a record set. So current db.openRecordSet. It's going to be select star 
from meal detail t where the meal id equals the meal id we're dealing with okay now you know me when it comes to record sets i like to put together the pieces of bread first and then i put the peanut butter and jelly in the middle right so while not rs.eof we're looping through records rs move next don't forget your increment when rs close set rs equals nothing and then in here we put in the jelly filling Okay, I always I always do that with my record sets because I always forget something at the bottom because my brain goes immediately into the jelly filling. All right, I talk about this a lot in my developer course. And once again, I know I've already pimped it, but I got a I got this you know this record set loop on a, a mouse pad on a shirt whatever you want in my store. Check it out. Now what I want to do in here is I want to call that add food item to log. Uh, uh, subroutine that we already wrote. Where are you? Here it is. All right. But this just takes a food ID. All right. I also need to send into it now the quantity because there could be, you know, three cans of tuna in the meal. So I need to add quantity and I need the meal description to put on the first line. So we got to add some parameters to this. Now, as long as you add these as optional parameters at the end, it doesn't affect anywhere else this gets called. So we'll make it an optional quantity as long, and we'll set the default equal to one because that's what it's expecting now. In fact, I don't think we have quantity in there at all, so it's, usually, it's just using the one from the table. And I wanna also send in optional meal description as a string, and the default for that will be blank, which is what the default is now. I just have to make sure that I add those in here somewhere. It doesn't matter where. So RS log quantity equals quantity and RS log meal description, which these are already in the table, equals meal description, right? So it takes the values I'm sending in or uses the defaults and adds those in there. Those are already fields in the log table. We don't got to worry about adding those. We just didn't use them before when we wrote this. But now it can handle more stuff. So now my jelly filling is really simple. Now all I have to do for each food item is add food item for four four item food item to log. What am I sending? Well, the food ID RS food ID comma the quantities in that table too RS quantity and the meal description we just looked up a minute ago meal name. Now, I only want the meal name for the first record. So once that happens, meal name equals blank. Yeah, you could, you, if you want to get technical, you could come in here and say, if meal name is not blank, then blank it. But it really doesn't slow it down much, not doing that. That's, that's, that's proper pinky up programming right there, though. Okay? Don't, don't change it if it's not, if it doesn't need to be changed. All right. You're ready to test it. Let's give it a test. Save it, debug, compile once in a while, close it, close it, reopen it. All right, here we go. We're going to add in an apple. Worked just fine. Let's add in a meal. Which one do you want to add in? Let's add in Rick's standard breakfast and go. Oh, look at that. There they are. Looks good. Looks really good. Now there's one other minor issue. Notice this is the first record. They all came in with exactly the same time. That's okay. I mean, it's, it's technically correct. But I kind of want them to come in in the right order so this one's up top. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, I would say that the ultimate best proper way to do this would be to add a custom sort field so that if two items have the same exact time, then you just go by the sort as the second field. But there's a better way to do it. Well, not better way. There's a there's a simpler way to do it with the database that we're working with. Um, since in this database, I don't really care. I barely care about it to the minute, right? I really only care about maybe to the half hour, right? Did I, did I eat at 11 or 11.30? That's about the amount of precision that I need for this database. I'm not, I'm not working with NASA probes here. So we don't have to be exacting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tiny offset. I'm going to add a one second offset, and then we can still sort by time. So each item is going to come in one second later than the previous one. I'm not going to delay it. 
I'm just saying we're going to add a counter variable to make it a little easier to deal with and so that this comes in in the right order. And we'll do that in tomorrow's video. So that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part 44. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.